My dear father, if my arms get mad, surely you'll allow me to choose the time, place and person. It's a matter for me, sir. You'd probably make a very poor choice. I'm the one who should be consulted, not you. There's property at stake. It's not a matter for affection. Affection comes later in married life. Yes. In married life, affection comes when people thoroughly dislike each other, doesn't it? Certainly, sir. I mean, certainly not, sir. You're talking very foolishly tonight. Common sense is the privilege of our sex. Quite so. And we men are so self-sacrificing that we never use it, do we? I use it, sir. I use nothing else. So my mother tells me. Hmm? It's the secret of your mother's happiness. I hope not, Father. Arthur. Tell me what I should do. Robert. You love your wife, don't you? I love her more than anything in the world. You, you know, I... I is to think ambition the great thing? It isn't. Love is the great thing in the world. There's nothing but love. And I love her. Oh, she's found me out. Has she never in her life done some folly, some indiscretion that she should not forgive your sin? Yeah, the truth. Never. She doesn't know what weakness or temptation is. But I love her. You're which child? There's no one else to love. No one to love me. I was brutal to her this afternoon. Your wife will forgive you. <sighs> Perhaps at this moment she's forgiving you. She loves you, Robert. Why should she not forgive? God granted. God granted. <sighs> the debate on the canals to begin at ten. I've made up my mind what I'm going to say. What was that? Nothing. Oh, I heard something fall in the next room. Someone's been listening. No. No, there's no one there. Shh, there is someone. Robert, you're excited. Unnerved. I tell you, there's no one there. Sit down. What explanation did you give me for the presence of that woman here? But I swear to you on my honour, that woman is stainless. She is a vile and infamous thing. Oh, don't say that, Robert. It was for your sake she came here. She loves you and no one else. What have I to do with her intrigues with you? Oh, no, let her remain your mistress. You're well suited to each other. She corrupt and shameful. You false as a friend. Treacherous as an enemy. No! You've lied enough upon your word of honour. Good evening, Arthur. Laura? Good heavens. May I ask what you're doing in my study? Merely listening. I have a perfect passion for listening through keyholes. Why don't you call me Laura? I don't like the name. You used to adore it. Yes, that's why. Arthur, you loved me once. Yes. You asked me to be your wife. That was the natural result of my loving you. And you threw me over because you saw, or you said you saw, poor old Lord Mortlake trying to have a violent flirtation with me. I'm under the impression my lawyer settled the matter with you on certain terms dictated by yourself. At the time I was poor, you were rich. Quite so. That is why you pretended to love me. I loved you, Arthur. My dear Laura, you've always been far too clever to know anything about love. When I saw you last night, I knew that you were the only person I've ever cared for. And so, on the day that you marry me, I will give you Robert Chilton's letter. That is my offer. I'll give it to you now if you promise to marry me. Now? Well, tomorrow. Are you really serious? Yes, quite serious. I should make you a very bad husband. I don't mind bad husbands. I've had two and they amused me immensely. You mean you amused yourself immensely, don't you? Do you think it is quite charming to be so rude to a woman in your own house? Are you going to allow your greatest friend, Robert Chilton, be ruined, rather than marry someone who's got considerable attractions left? I would have thought you'd have risen to some great height of self-sacrifice. 
Self-sacrifice is a thing that should be put down by law, instead of moralizing to the people for one who sacrifices oneself. For the privilege of being your wife, I was ready to surrender a great prize, the climax of my career. Very well. If Robert Chilton doesn't uphold my canal scheme, I expose him. You mustn't do that. It would be vile, horrible, infamous. Don't use such big words. They mean so little. It was a commercial transaction, that is all. Your transaction with Robert Chilton may pass as a loathsome commercial transaction in a loathsome commercial world. But you seem to have forgotten that you came here tonight to talk of love. You, whose lips desecrated the word love, went this afternoon to one of the most noble and gentle women in the world to degrade her husband in her eyes, to try and kill her love for him. That I cannot forgive you. That was horrible. In point of fact, I found it myself and stupidly forgot to tell anyone. This is the brooch, isn't it? Yes, I'm so glad to get it back. It was a present. Won't you wear it? Certainly, if you pin it in. I never knew it could be worn as a bracelet. Really? No, but it looks very well on me as a bracelet, doesn't it? Yes. Much better than when I saw it last. When did you see it last? Oh, ten years ago on Lady Berkshire, from whom you stole it. What do you mean? I mean that you stole that ornament from my cousin, Mary Berkshire, to whom I gave it when she was married. I recognised it last night. I determined to say nothing about it till I'd found the thief. It is not true. I'll deny the whole affair from beginning to end. You can't get the bracelet off unless you know where the spring is. And I see you don't know where the spring is. Oh, you brute. You coward. No, don't use big words. They mean so little. What are you going to do? I'm going to call for Phipps. And when he comes, I shall tell him to fetch the police. The police? What for? Now, tomorrow the Parkshires will prosecute you. That's what the police are for. Please don't do that. I'll do anything you want. Anything in the world that you want. I find that somehow Gertrude Chilton's dying speech and confession has strayed into my pocket. What do you mean? I mean that I'm going to send Robert Chilton the love letter his wife wrote to you tonight. Love letter? I want you, I trust you, I'm coming to you, Gertrude. So what are you doing here? Wasting your time as usual. Have you been thinking over what I talked to you about last night? I've been thinking about nothing else. Engaged to be married, are you? Uh, but, uh, not yet, but I hope to be before lunchtime. I can have till dinner time, if it would be of any convenience to you. Oh, thanks awfully, but I think I'd sooner be engaged before lunch. I never know when you're being serious or not. Neither do I, Father. Brilliant orator. Unblemished career. Cool. Well-known integrity of character. I sincerely hope not, Father. However, I'm delighted at what you tell me about Robert. And it shows he's got pluck. He's got more than pluck, sir. He's got genius. No, I prefer pluck. It, it's not so common nowadays as genius is. I wish you'd go into politics. My dear father, only people who look dull ever get into the county council. And only people who are dull ever succeed there. Why don't you try and do something useful in life? I'm far too young. Uh -huh. Oh, how do you do, Lord Caversham? I hope Lady Caversham is quite well. Oh, 
Lady Caversham is as usual, as usual. Good morning, Mabel. And Lady Caversham's hats, are they at all better? They've had a serious relapse, I'm sorry to say. Good morning, Mabel. I hope an operation will not be necessary. If it is, uh, we shall have to give Lady Caversham a narcotic, otherwise she'd never consent to having a feather touch. Good morning, Mabel. Oh, are you here? Of course, you understand that after your breaking your appointment, I'm never going to speak to you again. Oh, please don't say such a thing. You're the only person I really like to have to listen to me. Arthur, I never believe a single word that either you or I say to each other. You're quite right, my dear. Quite right, as far as he's concerned, I mean. Do you think you could possibly make your son behave a little better occasionally, just as a change? I regret to say, Miss Tilton, I have no influence at all over my son. Wish I had. I'm afraid he has one of those terribly weak natures that are not susceptible to influence. It seems to me I'm a little in the way here. It's very good for you to be in the way, and to know what people say about you behind your back. I don't at all like knowing what people say about me behind my back. It makes me far too conceited. After that, my dear, I really must bid you good morning. Oh, I hope you're not going to leave me all alone with Arthur. Especially at such an early hour in the day. I can't take him with me to the town hall. It's not the mayor's day for seeing the unemployed. I'm so glad you're busy. I wish you wouldn't look so pleased about it. I can't help it. I'm always pleased when I'm with you. And I suppose it's my duty to remain with you? Of course it is. And I have something very particular I want to say to you. Oh, is it a proposal? Well, yes, it is. I'm bound to say it is. I'm so glad. That makes the second today. Second today? What conceited ass has been impertinent enough to dare to propose to you before I propose to you? Tommy Trafford, of course. It's one of Tommy's days for proposing. He always proposes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You didn't accept him, I hope. I make it a rule never to accept Tommy. That's why he goes on proposing. Of course, as you didn't turn up this morning, I very nearly said yes. It would have been an excellent lesson for both of him and you if I had. Oh, bother Tommy Trafford. Tommy is a silly little ass. I love you. I know. And you might have mentioned it before. I'm sure I've given you heaps of opportunities. Mabel, I've told you that I love you. Can't you love me a little in return? You silly Arthur. If you knew anything about anything, which you don't, you'd know that I adore you. No one else knows except you. It's a public scandal the way I adore you. I'm going about for the last six months telling the whole of society that I adore you. Do you know, I was awfully afraid of being refused. But you've never been refused by anyone yet, have you, Arthur? Of course, I'm not nearly good enough for you. I'm so glad. I was afraid you were. I'll be in the conservatory under the second palm tree on the left. Second on the left? Yes, the usual palm tree. Gertrude, I have a certain amount of very good news to tell you. Oh? Laura Cheveley gave me up Robert's letter last night, and I burnt it. Robert is safe. Oh, safe. Oh, I'm so glad. What a good friend you are to him, Arthur. To us. There is only one person now that could be said to be in any danger. Mm, who's that? Yourself. Me? In danger? What do you mean? Danger is too great a word, but I have something to tell you that may distress you. Yesterday, you wrote me a very beautiful letter <gasps> asking me for my help. Last night, Mrs. Cheveley concealed herself in my study, and she stole that letter for me. Well, what use is it to her? Why should she not have it? Gertrude, I'll be quite frank with you. Laura Cheveley puts a certain construction on that letter and proposes to send it to your husband. But what construction could she put on it? Oh, not that. Arthur, I have to thank you for what you've done for me. I don't know how I can repay you. Oh, my dear fellow, I'll tell you at once. At the present moment, under the usual palm tree, I mean in the conservatory. Excuse me. Lord Cavisham. That admirable father of mine really makes a habit of turning up at the wrong moment. Gertrude? Mm hmm Why are you playing Laura Jeevely's cards? I don't understand you. Laura made an attempt to ruin your husband. 
either to drive him from public life or to make him adopt a dishonourable position. Why should you do him the wrong Laura tried to do and failed? Mother! You wrote me a letter yesterday in which you wanted my help. Now is the moment to trust me. You love Robert. What sort of existence will he have if you rob him of the fruits of his ambition? Don't make a terrible mistake, Gertrude. It is my husband himself who wishes to retire from public life. He feels it is his duty. It was he who first said so. Rather than lose your love, Robert would do anything. Wreck his whole career. And he's on the brink of doing now. Take my advice. And don't accept a sacrifice so great. What were you going to ask me? Robert, you are Mabel's guardian and... I want your consent to my marriage with her. That's all. Arthur! Oh, I'm so glad! I'm so glad! Thank you, Gertrude. My sister to be your wife. Yes. I'm sorry, Arthur, but the thing's quite out of the question. Now, I have Mabel's future happiness to think of, and I cannot have her sacrificed. Sacrificed? Yes. Utterly sacrificed. Loveless marriages are horrible. But I love Mabel. No other woman has any place in my life. Robert, if they love each other, why should they not be married? Arthur cannot bring Mabel the love that she deserves. What reason have you for saying that? Do you really require me to tell you? Certainly I do. When I called on you yesterday evening, I found Laura Chavely concealed in your rooms. Now, your relations with that woman have nothing whatsoever to do with me. But you spoke to me last night of her as of a woman pure and stainless, a woman you respected and honoured. Oh, that may be so. But I cannot give my sister's life into your hands. It would be wrong of me. It would be unjust to her. It wasn't Mrs. Cheveley whom Arthur expected last night. Who was it then? Your wife. You may go to Mabel, and you have our best wishes. Well, I hope she hasn't changed her mind. It's only 20 minutes since I saw her last. Arthur, I think your father's conversation much more improving than yours. Darling. <laughs> What does this mean, sir? You'd say this charming, clever young lady has been so foolish as to accept you? Certainly, Father. And Robert's been wise enough to accept the nomination. To Robert Chilton. You have a great future before you, a great future. I wish I could say the same for you, sir. But your career will have to be entirely domestic. Yes. I prefer it domestic. And if you don't make this young lady an ideal husband, I'll... Cut you off without a shilling. An ideal husband? I don't think I should like that.